Hello, I'm Avery or Hazel or Kylie. You can just pick one, I don't care. Hello, I am Lily. And welcome to the From the Closet podcast. Today we are covering Thor Ragnarok. Uh, yay! So obviously there will be spoilers for this movie. Uh, if you'd like to avoid those spoilers, you will find a link in the description below to the Just Watch page for this movie. Uh, where, you, like, in, bleh, that will lead you to a page that has links to every platform this podcast. Uh, wait, no, it won't. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you're talking about the Just Watch, it'll lead you to um, every place that you can rent, watch, or buy this m- rent, stream, or buy this movie. Yeah, um, for us here in the U.S., it's available on Disney+. Plus. Um, and also, like, recently... Um, I noticed that Spider-Man Homecoming was available on Disney Plus, and, like, that's pretty cool. Lily said Venom's on there, too, which, like, I didn't notice that one, but, I mean, yeah, that's pretty cool, if true. Yeah, uh, um, I was at my friend's house here scrolling through Disney Plus, and I literally had a saw, like, wait a minute, go back. <laughs> I think I just saw Venom. <laughs> Oh, wait, actually, yeah, um, the other Venom, uh, Venom Let There Be Carnage, is not on there. We actually checked. Okay. Uh, so that would likely mean that Morbius is not on there, but I imagine both are probably gonna come at some point. Yeah, um, I never checked Morbius. Right when I saw Venom, I was like, wait, what about Venom Let There Be Carnage? But yeah, um... So, uh, I don't think Spider-Man Far From Home or No Way Home are on there yet. A- at any rate, I didn't see them. Um, but, yeah. Uh, so, also in the description, you'll find a link to our Patreon, where you can vote on future episodes of this show, as well as get access to episodes before they release, as well as early access to episodes of our sister show, Off the Shelf, which is about books. And that podcast is exclusive to YouTube and Patreon. And then also in the description is a link to Spotify for Podcasters, which itself will have links to every platform that this podcast is on. It's actually true this time. As well as links to our Instagram (laughs) and Twitter, where you can be notified when we release new episodes. Uh, With all that being said, you can join us next week for X-Men The Last Stand and some other movie. We don't know what it is yet. You can find out next week. Um... When we cover X-Men The Last Stand. Yeah. Uh, We're actually recording this episode quite early because our next recording session is going to be on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Slingshot and the Marvel One-Shots. However, the very last Marvel One-Shot takes place after this movie. Kind of, because it's not... Kind of? Yeah, kind of, because it's not canon to the main universe. Now I'm confused. Yeah, like, the last three one-shots are in a separate universe, but they deal with characters who, well, just the last one deals with char- a character who was only introduced in this movie. And will never come back. I mean, as far as we know, no. That character has not come back. But, um, with all that out of the way... Um, I think we'll be starting talking about the movie now, so if you want to avoid spoilers, um, this is your cue now. Yeah, go away. Um, but, okay, so, I have said before, multiple times, that I think this is the best Thor movie. It also seems to be the general consensus that this is the best Thor movie. Honestly, I mean, everything that I find good about a Thor movie is present here and more. Yeah. Um, it, it, it's certainly better than uh, Thor The Dark World. Uh, and, like, there are a small number of people who think this movie is better than the first Thor movie. I mean, wait, bleh. I got that backwards. There are a small number of people who think the first movie is better than this movie. Yeah, um, though I find it interesting how, you know, we get to this moment, and uh, Hulk is just here. Yeah, I mean, 
It was like I said in our Planet Hulk episode, which, God, that was forever ago. Um, yeah. Like, Jesus, that was almost two years ago that we recorded that one. Jesus, time passes by. Yeah. But um, Marvel basically, like, put in all the setup to do the Planet Hulk storyline, and then they abandoned it. And just kind of merged what they... Like, they just kind of merged it with the Thor Ragnarok storyline. <laughs> so, what was the setup for um, the Planet Hulk storyline? Well, I mean, they basically just kind of, like, sent Hulk off on a on a ship, on a Quinjet, just headed off into space. But, like, when that, did they do that? That was in Age of Ultron. Oh. Huh. Yeah. Why can't I remember that? <laughs> Yeah, it's also why he wasn't in Civil War. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Also, okay. Obviously, um, when I was watching the um, Planet Hulk, I was just like, "Ah, oh, yeah, you know, Hulk, take your, take back your independence. Take, you know, this is where you belong." Watching this and seeing Bruce Banner, I'm just like, "Oh yeah, yeah, right." Hulk was being a big dick here. <laughs> yeah, I mean, in the Planet Hulk movie, we never saw Bruce Banner at all. Um, some differences though between this and the Planet Hulk movie. Korg is a lot more serious in that movie than he is in this movie. And Meek doesn't have any speaking lines in this movie. Also, we barely see them in this movie. Eh, I think they're present enough. I find Korg hilarious. Um, I just think we should have... I mean, if I had it my way, I feel like we should have gone like a whole Planet Hulk movie, but, you know. Yeah, I mean... It kind of feels like this movie literally takes a detour to go do Planet Hulk stuff. Yeah. I mean, honestly, um, this entire movie just feels like, meanwhile, back with Hulk. <laughs> I mean, it's... To me, it's just a detour. Um, but also, I had mentioned that there was a plot hole that I wanted to talk about when we got to this movie. Uh, and mm. it specifically relates to Doctor Strange. Because... Like, Odin dies, and then Hela breaks out. At this point, Doctor Strange would be aware that there was more interdimensional activity going on. Because, yeah, there was. So why didn't he show up? Like, oh. th there's, like, it, there's not even an argument of, oh, he wouldn't have had time. The dude can literally open portals and be there in an instant. Well, I mean, I mean, the stuff in this, um, isn't he the main protector of Earth? Yeah, and the inter bleh, the interdimensional activity that I'm speaking of is literally happening in Norway. Oh, right, yeah. What's even happening in the interdimensional activity or whatever? I mean, it's mostly just Hela escaping. Hmm. But yeah, uh, I don't know, just that hit me. And also, can we talk about how funny the the whole thing of, like, Loki saying to Doctor Strange, you think you're some kind of sorcerer? Like, <laughs> like bro, he's literally the Sorcerer Supreme. Yeah, well, Loki is uh, mischief. Oh, yeah, that's Loki. <laughs> yeah. Uh, more like malice. I mean, who the hell turns into a snake and then, like, you know, gets their brother to pick them up and then transforms back into themselves and is, and is like, ah, it's me, and then stabs him. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, 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 love, I love that last part. You know, you could have just had, like, you know, just nice um, brotherly, um, you know, like, oh, I scared you. Nope, and then he got stabbed. Yeah, like, that first part, that's mischief. But the stabbing him, that's malice. No, I'm pretty sure the stabbing him, that's just Loki. 
that that's just Loki being Loki. Yeah, he enjoys hurting people. He does. Thanks for asking. <laughs> but yeah, um, I don't know. I really like uh, also like when um, when Thor first goes to Asgard in the movie. Uh, I really loved seeing Anthony Hopkins playing Loki, pretending to be Odin. Oh my god, yeah. Like, god, it, like that is some really good acting right there. You know, speaking of which, I have a question for you. Hmm. You had said, like, when you were watching this movie, you had messaged me saying, like, Something about, like, how God of War Ragnarok makes you, like, really pissed off every time you see Odin now? Yes. So, was that when you actually saw Odin Odin, or was that when you saw Loki? Uh, I believe that's when I saw Loki. I mean, <laughs> when we actually saw Odin Odin, it wasn't long after he effing died. <laughs> yeah, like... Um, so yeah, and, and like, like I said, um previously and in, in other episodes um now ego the ancient one and odin are all dead um so someone's coming hmm i wonder who that is hopefully or not barney the bear or dinosaur <laughs> yeah it, it, it's definitely the purple dinosaur from our imagination yeah hopefully don't get um all the infinity stones and want to take out half the world yeah that that definitely won't happen um his barney's a dinosaur he's everyone's friend yeah i mean our next movie is black panther and then after that it's infinity war so great now we get to finally get properly introduced to um barney the dinosaur i mean i felt like we got a proper introduction in guardians of the galaxy I wonder how many people I just pissed off. <laughs> I don't know. I, I do find it a little bit funny, but I mean, let's be real. Like if you, if you want to describe infinity war, it's just single father tries to save, like tries to end world hunger with his rock collection. <laughs> God damn. I hate how you describe that as rock collection. But yeah, um, so this is uh, the destruction of Asgard and all its people, kind of, not really, because most of the people survive. There are quite a few who die, though. Uh, importantly, the Warriors 3 died in this movie, uh, hmm. who were basically all Thor's best friends. Um, Sith? Ah, uh, Thor has no best friends. He has to go back to um, Tony. Yeah. Sif, however, did not die in this movie because she wasn't. Was she? she? We don't fucking know. She wasn't in it. <laughs> huh. So I mean, I think I want to talk about um just Ragnarok for a second because I mean the moment that this movie was even announced, you already knew what was going to happen. It's Ragnarok. Yeah. This has been foretold in um, mythology since, you know, mythology. I mean, if you know anything about Norse mythology, you know it's coming. Um, yeah. But yeah, um, gotta say, I love the whole, uh, the whole thing of um, Thor losing his hammer. I, th I feel like it's a really great, like, character moment for him. Because, like, um, he has to learn to use his power without being able to use the hammer. Which... There's a butt coming after that, isn't there? No. Uh, I mean, eventually. Just, uh, just a second here. Because, like... He, yeah, he can use the power without the hammer. But the hammer's still a good thing to have. Not just... For the fact that it's a hammer, it literally helps him focus the power. That's what Odin said. Um, mm -hmm. But a lot of people have a particular issue with this movie, and it's just because they don't understand something. They see this as a plot hole. Uh, 
because when somebody else picks up that hammer, they have the powers of Thor. And how can that be possible if this movie said that the power is inside Thor? And I feel like you should go back and rewatch the first Thor movie. Because in that movie, it literally says, Whosoever holds this hammer, if he be worthy, shall possess the power of Thor. And, wow, guess... And also, I mean, it even says the power of Thor, right? Yeah. So it's ba Thor still has that power, and if you be worthy... You also have power of Thor. Yeah. Basically, there would be two Thors. If Thor didn't have any power, the, getting the power of Thor would be fucking worthless. And also, just a, a whole other thing to point out. One of the powers of Thor is the ability to pick up the hammer. Um, Wait, it's not there's a catch-22. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of... We're, like, you can grab the hammer, but you're not moving it if you don't have the power of Thor. Huh. There That's interesting. Yeah. So, what if... I, I know they've already mentioned this in the movie. What if an ele Like, if you put in an elevator, is the elevator worthy? No. <laughs> Although, I'm not entirely sure that it would work. Because, um... Mm. I mean, Stan Lee hooked up a truck to it and tried, like, driving to get the hammer to move, and it wouldn't budge. Though I wonder what happens if Thor was the one that was driving. It would probably, like, it would probably move, and then the truck would, like, slam into a tree. What? Yeah, because Thor has never driven before. Oh. Huh. And knowing Thor, he would be the the exact type of person to find the one tree in the middle of New Mexico and crash into it. <coughs> oh, look a tree! Pretty birds crash. But yeah, um, so I find that I, I I find this movie like it's particularly funny, but it also doesn't fall into that. Um, awkward part of, like, having serious moments that get undercut by jokes, because, like, the serious moments in this movie are still serious. Mm hmm And, like, they, they don't get undercut at all. Um, there are other scenes later that are like that as well. Um. I like the point where, um, Loki goes to betray Thor, and Thor already has a um, contingency plan for that. <laughs> yeah. Um, but... Hell, I mean, it was predictable. I'll say that. Yeah. But it was still nice to see. Yeah, like, Loki betraying him is, like, absolutely predictable. Um, no, I actually noticed, like, once they were, like, all of the, um, the things that are keeping them prison, and I saw Thor had it, I, I immediately knew, yeah... He's going to put that on Loki. <laughs> but yeah, um, I also really love uh, the character of the Valkyrie. Um, I really wish they would give her a fucking name. Because, like, we are literally at this point in the MCU now. And they still haven't given her a name. Everyone just calls her the Valkyrie. Oh, that's another thing that um, I learned because of uh, God of War Ragnarok. Yeah, in the MCU, it's kind of just stated like all the other valkyrie were wiped out by hella um and she's the only one left that interesting um yeah the valkyrie are sworn to um serve under odin and protect asgard right mm -hmm. of course um asgard Ain't a fucking thing anymore. Well, I mean, they're kind of saying, like, you know, Asgard isn't the place, it's the people. But, uh... Yeah, when I found that fight, uh, and I find that cheesy, Asgard's effing dead, and I'm real, uh, loving it. 
and don't worry about it. But, uh, yeah, uh, so one joke in particular, though, that I love, and I don't know why I love it, it's like when we first meet Cord, he's like, yeah, um, I'm made of rocks. Uh, you don't need to worry unless you're made of scissors. Uh, uh, that, that, that's just a good joke that everyone <laughs> can understand. Yeah. Um, I, I also love, like, when Loki shows up to, like, speak to Thor in that little area. And then, like, the second he leaves, Korg runs up and is like, Piss off, ghost! <laughs> Damn it, he's fucking gone! No, I love uh, the stuff that, um... Like, every time Loki was on screen with Thor... Thor just has to, like, start throwing things at him just to make sure he's real. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that That's pretty good, too. Um, the, I mean, it made the ending scene a lot more wholesome than even if it was originally when he said, um, if you're actually here, I might, I might even hug you. And then he, uh, with an amazing catch, um, caught the little ball thing. And then they like I'm here, brother. And then they don't fucking hug. I mean, he did say might. <laughs> but yeah, um, the actors were allowed to do like a lot of like improv. Um, the script on this movie was very light. Um, I mean, I think that's how I like it, especially with established characters. Like everyone knows. Um, Thor, and so is his own, you know, actor. He knows how to play Thor. <laughs> I have been falling for 30 minutes! And obviously Loki knows, Loki's actor knows how to play Loki to a to a fault. I mean, th this, this man's playing with science right now, making the best Loki lines. Yeah. Um, I will say, like, Doctor Strange's part in this movie is a little bit odd. Because, like, yeah, like, if you want, um, if you want to, like, get the entire story of Doctor Strange, uh, before watching, say, Infinity War or Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, you have to watch this movie. And he's in this movie for all of, like, two or three minutes. Uh, yeah. Really weird. And like half of the um, time was already in the post credit scene. I mean, I wouldn't, I'd say maybe a quarter of the time was already in the post credit yeah. scene of uh, Doctor Strange. It's just a very weird addition, though I, I think I kind of like it because, well, you know, they want to make it so that, um, you want they want you to know that all of the th all the movies in the MCU they are connected they are taking place in the same universe. Yeah, like but with more and more characters, you should be expecting them to at least interact with each other a little bit more. Yeah, like it's better than what we had in Phase Two, where the characters like just didn't interact and a lot of the time didn't even mention uh, the other characters. Uh, in particular. Like, I'm thinking of Iron Man 3, uh, Thor the Dark World, and Captain America the Winter Soldier. It was like, a lot of people had complaints about the movies just not even feeling connected at all. Um, and and I, I've, I've seen a lot of complaints about, you know, Marvel um, haters. I mean, that's the best way I can call it. That, um, you know, they're not taking any risks, you know, they're not, you know, they have these well-established characters, you know, just bogging down this other person's movie, you know. I don't think that's the case at all. They want it to be connected universe. There should be characters inside other people's movies. Now, at the same time, Marvel doesn't take as many risks, I feel like, as they used to. Um, mm -hmm. Like, Guardians of the Galaxy alone, uh, as, as well as Ant-Man, were both huge risks um, to take. 
And then, like, destroying Thor's hammer, that was, like, a huge, like, leap there. Um, and then, like, Infinity War, dear God. Yeah, well, um, I haven't gone to that part yet, so... <laughs> but yeah, um... Something I will say, though, like, our next movie, uh, is taking place before this one. Our next movie takes place, like, right after Civil War. Or actually, I think oh. it's six months after Civil War. Oh, yeah. Um, bla bla <laughs> what the hell am I trying to say? Black Panther. Yeah. But I don't know. I, I, I feel like this movie, pretty funny. It has great character moments, which I love. But I also, I want to talk about the music. Okay. Hmm. Some people have complained that they use the same song twice in the movie. I'm going to tell you why I don't think that's a problem. Because it's Def Leppard's immigrant song. And if you get Def Leppard to agree to let you license their music for anything, hell yeah, use it as much as you want. Because they are. Why? Is there like. They don't license their music a lot? They, or at all? They really don't. Like, they oh. are notorious for not licensing their music ever. Not a single one of their songs ever appeared in any Guitar Hero or Rock Band game. Well, but they just don't like Guitar Hero Rock Band or video games. What if, they, what if they're like old boomers? Like, dang, these young people on their video games. I don't quite think they're like that, but, uh, yeah, it's like... They, they don't well, like... on other media? It, it... Like, um... I'll, I'll tell you this, I, I don't think I've ever seen Def Leppard music in any other media. Interesting. Yeah, like, they're very notorious about it. And, like, they use Immigrant Song for this movie, which itself, like, the lyrics are already, like, like, very heavily take inspiration from Norse mythology. That's probably why they wanted it. Yeah, yeah. So Disney had to have it. I mean, if it, if what you're saying is true, then I'm just wondering how long it took to, like, have the negotiation table. <laughs> yeah, that that's something I very much wonder about, too. But, yeah, they, um... I don't know. I feel like that scene where Thor is just leaping towards Fenris Wolf, like, with the lightning... It, it just would not hit the same without the intro to Immigrant Song playing in the background. Oh my god, uh, Fenrir. Uh, the Wolf of Ragnarok. Fenrir, Fenris, uh, like, it, depending on what translation you prefer. Um, in, in the MCU, they no, use... I just, I just love, um... I just love that dog. Yeah, like in it, any um, interpretation. Yeah, like in the MCU, they they prefer the translation Fenris. Um, pretty sure it's the I I, I want to say it's the same in the Magnus Chase series, but I it's been so long since I've read that series that I forgot. Um, there's t um God of Ragnarok prefers Fenrir, and uh, a random game that I played it also refers to as Fenrir. It wasn't even have it. It's just a mention of North mythology, but the game wasn't actually about North mythology. Yeah, but um, yeah, I I, I really, uh, I really think the music in this movie was spot on. Mm -hmm. Amazing to see like, to see Def Leppard Def Leppard music actually make it in here. Really cool. I don't know. Um, like, I have bitched about um licensed music just bogging down scenes in the last few months. I, I'm not going to do it again, but, like, it definitely fits a lot more than, we say, the Mario movie. Like, what in the world were you doing? You just, you just have it because. Just because. See, I have not seen that movie. I'll be honest. A lot of the fan... Like, a lot of the fan... Um, just... Uh, the fan ratings. There we go. Um, thing about the movie, the same. Really good, but there are some parts that were just 
not it's just okay or some parts you, know, you could have left that out some parts where their illumination is showing and it's mostly the licensed music so parts where their illumination is showing yeah but uh for the most part it's a really good movie i mean there's also just the whole chris pratt is mario yeah i mean a lot of people calm down on that I mean, I, I've talked to people who have seen it, and um, they uh, also didn't particularly like... The trailer. They also they particularly didn't like uh, um, most of the voices. In fact, I, I know one person who said, like, the only voices that really worked for them were uh, Luigi and Bowser. No, I disagree with that. I mean, it doesn't sound like they're actual voices. But I, it made me watch the movie full way, so it's fine. But yeah, um, I don't know. So I really like this movie. We we got through the Ragnarok storyline and sort of got through the Planet Hulk storyline. Um, gotta love the he's a friend from work. Great meme. <laughs> uh, oh, and then um the. Also, yeah, we didn't even mention the meme that spawned from this um, movie. I mean, there's been multiple the, memes that spawned from this movie, to be fair. I mean, like, the one, like, the more prevalent one that I've seen, um, I can't uh, defeat you, but he can. <laughs> yeah. Surtur and his giant fucking sword. <laughs> which actually has a name. It's called Twilight. Huh. Okay, then. Yeah, so... It, it's kind of weird to me that that, that that sword is called Twilight. Because, like, you think about... You think about other weapons in Norse mythology. Twilight does not sound like it would be one of them. Yeah, no, you have fucking uh, Mjolnir... And then Twilight. Yeah, it. I don't know. It's fucking weird. But then, <laughs> but then the Magnus Chase series just has a sword that they named Jack. Uh, uh what, what? Uh, nice weapon. Can I see it? Like, yeah, sure, you can see Jack. What? <laughs> yeah, the sword's called Jack, and it's also alive. Oh, wait a minute. The sword's alive. Is that also North mythology? I I think it is like actually some a sword that exists in Norse mythology, and like Jack was just a nickname to make it make everything easier. Oh, shit! Wait, I think I remember that sword now. Like I I, I be in um the game. I think wow, it, I'm relating everything to. I think it belonged uh, to a specific god. And, like, the special thing about it was that it, like, it could move around on its own. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um... Yeah, that was in, um, God of War Ragnarok as well. Yeah, well, they call it Jack in the Magnus Chase series. I forgot what it was named, like, what they called in... It's definitely not Jack, I'll say that much. <laughs> I, I think I would have remembered that. <laughs> yeah um but yeah uh, i i also played like the uh thor god of thunder uh video game uh i played the ds version uh i feel like i have to clarify because every goddamn version of that game is a different game i mean especially the ds version because you know you're not getting the same quality as the one you're getting on other consoles. I feel like even amongst the other consoles, it's a very different game from console to console. But, like, in the DS version, you go to uh, Muspelheim and you actually fight Surtur. Huh. Interesting. And, um, you're, like, expected to win that fight. And, uh, yeah, it, it's 
kind of it, it was kind of weird for me seeing this movie after playing that game and them just being like, yeah, we can't beat Surtur. <laughs> Lol. I mean, I guess they didn't really want to beat Surtur. Yeah, but then again, Thor does actually beat Surtur in this movie, so... Eh. Yeah, what, chops off his head? Yeah, and, you know, stores it in, like, the vault right next to the Eternal Flame. You know, I really did not see that as, like, the best move. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I also do love how this movie does, like, retcon something uh, from the first Thor movie. So, hmm. in the first Thor movie, inside Odin's vault, you can see an Infinity Gauntlet. And literally everyone was questioning, wait, how the fuck is Thanos gonna get that? And then in this movie, like, Hela just... It, like, there, there's a whole conversation about treasures, and then Hela is like pushes the Infinity Gauntlet off the pedestal and is like, fake! <laughs> Most of the stuff in here is fake. So that's how they solved it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just, it's fake. <laughs> Which, you know, I think, I, mean, <laughs> I think that's a good and funny way to solve it. I especially mean, but at this point, Thanos already has the Infinity Gauntlet, doesn't he? Yes, he does. We saw him put it on um, in Age of Ultron. So yeah, there'd be no way that he was able to get into Asgard and steal it. Yeah, no way. Asgard's one of the most heavily guarded places in the universe. Unless he made like a fucking side deal with Loki. Like, who hasn't? I mean... Thanos was behind the whole New York invasion in the Avengers. Yeah, who hasn't made a, a side deal with Loki yet? But yeah, um... So, I think with all that being said, like, that's just about all uh, for this movie. A uh, great Thor movie, uh, pretty good uh, MCU movie. Um, I would say it's potentially like in the top ten MCU movies overall. I don't think it makes. Yeah, but then you like go over like all the MCU movies, like um, oh that's better, uh, but that's better. Yeah, like that was just to uh, like it, the, Lily is referring to a previous conversation that we had. Um, where like I was saying, yeah, I definitely think it's in the top ten, but I don't think it's in the top five. Oh, okay. Yeah, because, um... So then, um, you want me to get through with the critic ratings? Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> uh, uh, IMDb gives it a 7.9 out of 10. Ron Tomatoes gives it a 93%. Metacritic gives it a 74%. And 84% of Google users like this movie. I think... Also, I... Go ahead. I just love how... Because... The reason I stuttered a little bit there is my eyes wandered down to based on as Thor by Stan Lee, this other person, and Jack Kirby. Yeah. And I could not get that on my head. What? You... I saw Kirby. <laughs> All right. I mean, I, I've known about Jack Kirby as like a an author or a comics artist for a while. So I'm sorry. When I think of Kirby, I the first thing I think of is a little pink ball. Oh well, then you're gonna think you're gonna think it's really weird that there is a brand of vacuum cleaners named Kirby. No, it's not that weird at all. Vacuum cleaners, you know, the things that suck. Yes. But uh, yep, that, that that's pretty on brand for Kirby right there. <laughs> but yeah, uh, anyway, um, I think I'm gonna give this movie, uh, I don't know, maybe an eight point seven. Mm, eight point four. Yeah. All right. So next week, X Men: The Last Stand. Um. Later this month, you can see Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. slingshots uh, and the Marvel one-shots, which will include uh, Team Thor and Team Daryl. 
Uh, and next month, you can join us for Black Panther. Uh, and eventually, later down the line, we'll be doing Thor Love and Thunder, because we kind of have to. Well, yeah, later down the line. Much later, because uh, we got a lot of stuff to cover before then. See you next year. Yeah, because I, I actually don't think we're even starting Phase 4 until next year. We are not, but we do end it. Yeah. We do end uh, Phase 3. I'm pretty sure Phase 3 ends in December. It does. Yeah, okay. So, um, with all that being said, I've been Avery, that's been Lily, and we will be seeing you.